just a quiet Sunday morning in Wichita, Kansas. What a way to kick off our triple header on CBS today as number 10 Cincinnati visits 11th ranked Wichita State. Here's a look at the standings in the American Conference. Cincinnati has already clinched a share of the regular season league title. If they want to avoid sharing it with Wichita State, they need to win today. And hi, everyone. Welcome to Wichita. We'll put over and over coach Steve Lapis. I'm Andrew Catalan. We're right in front of the student section. They've been camped out since Friday afternoon. First time CBS has ever done a game in this building. And if you've never been here before, it's one of the best atmospheres in all of college basketball. I gotta tell you, I haven't had goosebumps in probably 10 years since I've been doing this before a game, but I have them today. I've been to all the great arenas, Cameron Indoor, uh, uh, Fog Allen. Allen, Rupp Arena. This place has it just like anybody else. They are fired up today to get a piece of the conference championship. And they met two weeks ago. Cincinnati lost at home against Wichita State. It's a great chess match, offense against defense. And as we take a closer look at our AT&T fast analysis, what are the keys today, Coach? Well, one of the big things about Cincinnati, they pick you up full court about 27% of the time. And they do a great job of forcing you to the sideline. They love getting dribblers out of control and then attacking them and making steals. They lead the American Conference in steals this year also. But in the half court, they're also tremendous. They do a great job of stopping you from reversing the ball by switching all the screens. They force you to a sideline and then they load up and help. Take a look here at all the red shirts loaded up to help on Landry Shaman and forcing him into a turnover. Wichita State, on the other hand, one of the best offensive teams in the country. They do a great job of reading screens. Landry Shaman curls off the screen, draws the help, and hits Austin Reeves in the corner. The other thing they do, because they shoot the three so well, they have great spacing. And they got a guy like Shaq Morris down low who can score both ways in the paint. One of the leading percentage shooters in the American Conference. He is a tough football scorer. Well, we're about to have some fun on CBS. Cincinnati and Wichita State coming up next. CBS Sports College basketball coverage is sponsored by Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings, beer, sports. Progressive Insurance, your first round pick for car insurance. And by Buick from Coke Arena in Wichita, Kansas. Winner of this game gets the number one seed for the American Conference Tournament. Coming up this week in Orlando, look at the starting lineups. Jacob Evans, the third, injured his left ankle Thursday at Tulane, but he is okay. He will start tonight. And for Wichita State, it's senior day. Connor Frankamp gets the start in favor of the sophomore, Austin Reeves. Mick Cronin in his 12th season at Cincinnati. They have yet to defeat a top 25 team this year. They are ranked number 10 in the country, and Greg Marshall now in his 11th season with the Shockers. Six and one at home during his career at Wichita State against the top 25. 22nd consecutive sellout crowd here at Charles Coke Arena. They call it the Roundhouse. It is loud. Hardly a ticket to be had, even on the secondary market. It's been crazy, some of the prices we've seen. Wichita State, its first year in the American Conference, and they have a chance to share the regular season title with a win today, and we're underway. And you can expect Wichita State to play about 95% man-to-man. And you know what we talked about their offense? They're not a bad defensive team, but they hang their head on the offense, and Cincinnati's the opposite. Three ball for Evans is good. And a great start for Evans, who only played 11 minutes Thursday night because the left ankle injury. Here's Frank Camp, the Wichita native. One of six seniors. They will do the ceremony for Wichita State after the game. And you will see Wichita State move the ball from side to side. They reverse the ball as good as any team in the country. Boy, you don't see him miss that bad. Well, Rashard Kelly cleans it up underneath, and we 
had a problem with the clock as the shot clock was not rolling. So our crew today of Doug Sermons, Joe DeRosa, and Keith Kimball stop play. It shouldn't have reset as Frankham had an air ball on that three-point attempt. Yeah, it was down to seven, it looked like. One of the things that we can expect from Wichita State, and you need to do this when you play against a team that is so good defensively and helps as well as Cincinnati, you got to move the ball to side to side. And the thing about Wichita State, they shot 54% in that first game. That is almost impossible to do against a Mick Cronin coach team. Cincinnati comes in second in the country, holding opponents to 36% shooting. Take another look, a, a rare. Frank Camp air ball as he shoots 36% from deep on the season. And there's four seconds on the shot clock. Wow, I thought there was more. So it'll be Zach Brown who just got a haircut to inbound with four on the shot clock. Morris throws it away. Clark chases it down over to Evans for the flush. And Cincinnati, you know, you talk about Virginia and how they play defense. They pack it in. They make it so that you can't get to the basket. Cincinnati plays pressure, denial, man-to-man -man defense. Completely different, but just as effective as a team like Virginia. They lob it inside to Morris. Out to Shemmett, who fakes the three. Now, Wichita State will reset. The Shockers have won seven games in a row. Wow, this defense is really sharp right now. Morris triple teamed inside, and a foul is called with three on the shot clock. Cincinnati has a great bounce in their step right now. That was on Gary Clark, and it sends Shaq Morris, one of the six Wichita State seniors, to the free throw line, where he's 72% this season. When these two teams met two weeks ago in Cincinnati, Wichita State won by four. It was one of the more physical games you've seen this year in college basketball. We expect more of the same today. Well, no surprise. These are also two of the best rebounding teams in the country, especially on the offensive class. Cincinnati number two in offensive rebound percentage. Wichita State number 10. These guys go at the glass. Jennifer with hit on the shot clock, season opening, dishes to Clark, and it knocked away from behind. Shockers in transition, Rashard Kelly end to end, and it's taken away by Jaron Cumberland, but it'll stay with the Shockers. Well, this great defense by Landry Sham, even though he should have rotated inside on that, he did get the block. And one of the things we need to watch about Cincinnati, they are also the number one transition defense in the country. And that really showed here. Black shirts all back on defense like they're supposed to be. Now, I mentioned it would be physical. And Shaq Morris is pointing to his mouth, saying that he has a cut. And now the officials are looking at the monitor to see if there's anything potentially flagrant when Morris got hit. In the first game between these two, Morris got hit in the mouth, but it was from his own teammate, Darrell Willis. This was the defensive play. I'll tell you, those black shirts, they get back really quickly. Incidental contact, according to Doug Sermons, who came over and told us, so no foul attached to the pop to the mouth that Shaq Morris received. It'll be Shockers basketball underneath the basket. Wichita State 13 and 1 at Coke Arena this year. And Shaman throws it in. What a tremendous pass and cut 
One thing you have to do against Cincinnati, you have to back cut. Because if they're going to deny you, you've got to make those cuts to the basket. Cumberland rises and connects. Jaron Cumberland averaging 11 points per game. Cumberland and Evans are two really good wings, and they have good size also. Morris guarded by Washington. Morris beats him. Kyle Washington struggled defensively in the first game against Wichita State. Look for the Shockers to go right at him again today. And that was a big time move. They got the ball in bounds. It did Shaq Morris a little too easy. You got to front him a little bit and get the help from the weak side. Washington cannot return the favor, and the ball comes to Shannon. Does not have numbers, so he'll slow up. Kelly, the top offensive rebounder in the American Conference. Now Shamit for three. It's good. Washington for three, in and out. And the rebound is Zach Brown. It's an 8-2 run for Wichita State. Morris again beats Washington. Shaq Morris runs right to the box in transition. You gotta do your work early on him, because if he establishes that position, he's too big and strong, you can't get him out of it. Oh, a tough shot from Cumberland, an attempt to quiet this crowd. Remember, an 11 a.m. start here, and this place is rocking. I gotta tell you, I, I know Mick Cronin's got his eye on Kyle Washington right now defensively, and Morris has taken him twice. Shamit slips, does not travel. And now Fran Camp will reset. Wichita State already has six points in the paint in this game. Cincinnati switches everything, so you're going to have some mismatches here and there. Land camps three, no good. Kelly tips it out, but right to Jennifer. Bearcats, after dropping two straight earlier in February, have now won three in a row, including a blowout win over Tulane on Thursday in New Orleans. Just four losses on the season for Cincinnati. Washington struggles continue, and Kelly takes it away. Well, Shaq Morris made him take the fadeaway. Brown, count it, and the foul! <laughs> Pointed out, it's rather loud in here. We actually have a decibel meter for today's game. And that basket went to 110. This Shaq Morris bucket, 113. And just to give you an idea of what 113 means, that's louder than a rock concert, not as loud as a chainsaw. The indoor record, Allen Fieldhouse, 130 in Arrowhead Stadium where the Kansas City Chiefs play, 142. So. Early on, we're somewhere between a rock concert and a chainsaw, Steve. Well, for the start of a game, that's not bad. These people <laughs> are going to get into it even more as time goes on. For one thing, Andrew, in terms of Wichita State, the way they play, they have five field goals and they have five assists. They're number three in the country in assists per game. No team shares the ball like the Shockers. Four different Shockers have an assist already as Brown comes out and Marcus McDuffie checks in. Rondo Merger and Austin Reeves have also entered for Wichita State and Keen Broom has come on, replacing Kyle Washington for Cincinnati. So Cincinnati decides they're going to go a little bit smaller here. This year Brooks on, on the floor as well for the Bearcats. This is Clark. Clark tough. Two down low for Gary Clark. You know, he's got to be a difference in this game for them. One of the reasons why they lost the first game was they had no answer to Shaq Morris inside. They need to get Gary Clark going in this game. Clark had 11 points, eight rebounds two weeks ago against Wichita State. He's Kelly converts. I'll tell you what, their defense in the lane so far is not good. Points in the paint. Wichita's got 10 points in the paint already in this game. Evans straight away three. 
play down and out. Brooks the offensive board, and he is fouled. Fouls on Rano Nerger, his first. And it will send Nasir Brooks to the line, where he's just a 61% free throw shooter. Sophomore out of Philadelphia. Well, you can stream live 24-7 highlights, scores, and news for free across all your connected devices with the all-new CBS Sports HQ. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Very cool product that was just launched last week. Brooks misses both. Darrell Willis, the rebound. And one thing about Greg Marshall, he has some of the best depth in the country, and he is using it. Shockers have made six of their last seven shots. They lead it by four. Look at the spacing they have, though, and they all move and cut. McDuffie off the mark with a three. McDuffie steals it right back. Sam it back to McDuffie. Nozer down low. He had it blocked. Joe DeRosa, the referee, was right there. No call on either play. I thought it was a great defensive play. You're not getting anything easy here. Now on the whistle. And a foul is called on the Sear Brooks. Let's go back to the block by Cincinnati. Yeah, there was nothing there, that's for sure. Or there either. They call the offensive foul on Nasir Brooks. That is a point of emphasis this year, keeping offensive players from using their arms to get better position. Two straight turnovers by the Bearcats. Great defensive play by Kane Bird. Steals it, now running the break. Humbling corner three, it's good! You cannot fall asleep, especially if you catch the ball in the middle of the floor against Cincinnati. You know somebody is coming from somewhere. Cumberland has seven of Cincinnati's 14 points. Shamit trying to answer. Short. And in the corner, so Sema tracks it down. The freshman out of the Congo who played 13 minutes in the first game against Wichita State, getting some early run here in the first half. Set play, trying to get a high low with Gary Clark. And Wallace is called for the foul as Clark went up. Well, you take a look here. You can see this coming a mile away. Here comes the high low from Nasir Brooks. He catches the ball. We're going to freeze it right there. Look at the great position that Gary Clark gets inside. That was a good pass and a good seal up by Gary Clark. Clark at the line with 12 or 4 to go first half. Tuesday on CBS, come on down for an episode that will keep you guessing. The Price is Right host, Drew Carey. Guest stars on a powerful new NCIS Tuesday at 8, 7 central on CBS. I love the play call from Nick Cronin to get the high low because, as I said earlier, Shaq Morris got a lot done in the first game. Gary Clark did not. They've got to establish something inside. Clark comes out to get a breather. Trayvon Scott enters for the Bearcats, who did not go back to Cincinnati after their win Thursday night at Tulane. They stayed in Tulane Thursday night, flew to Wichita Friday, and have been here the last 48 hours. Morris turnaround, no good. You know, they're getting caught behind Shaq Morris a lot. Now, they were able to push him out a little bit that time. You can't let him make that many touches. He's also a very good catcher. Shocker started six for nine. Since then, they've missed their last five in a row. Broom, turnaround. Offensive rebound is pulled out by Sosema. Now a foul on the shot by Evans. He will shoot when we come back. What a start here at the Roundhouse in Wichita. Cincinnati and Wichita State toe-to-toe -to -toe on CBS.
a tremendous three-point shooter, number eight in the country named Jonathan Stark, a six-foot senior, transferred from Tulane, makes three and a half threes a game. They can shoot it, a very efficient offensive team. They're gonna be a tough out for somebody. Jerry Palm has them, as a matter of fact, as a 13th seed, playing guess who? Wichita State. <laughs> Three shots for Evans after he was fouled in the corner. Steve, you and I see each other more than we see our wives. Yes. We have a very good relationship. <laughs> I thought it was interesting, though. You told both coaches this morning that this scene, this game, this atmosphere is what you miss the most about being a head coach. No question about it, because everybody always says, well, you know, you haven't lost the game. I said, yeah, but you know what? This feeling that you guys have today coming into this building with your team to compete, you can't get that feeling anywhere. This is what I miss. And then winning is the other thing I miss. Yeah. But you don't always win. <laughs> Cincinnati has scored six straight points. Wichita State coming up on three minutes without scoring. But you have to hang in there against Cincinnati. You know you're going to have droughts. You just got to be really resilient mentally, knowing we're going to miss five in a row. No question during the game. Here's Austin Reeves. Very good shooter. Only five on the shot clock. And it taken oh. away by Evans. Wow. That was a big time steal. Evans all the way. Count it. And he'll have a chance for a three-point play. I think that was a good call. First foul on Connor Frankamp as we take another look. Well, you see what happens is Reeves turns his back with the ball and loses sight of where Evans is. And he kind of he kind of made him go where he wanted him to go, knowing he was going to turn and come get it. Evans makes that one to give the Bearcats a five-point advantage. And you notice Shaq Morris has not seen the ball in the low post for a long time, and Kyle Washington has not been in the game this whole time either. 9-0 run for Cincinnati. Reeves trying to end it. He can't. Tips around and right to Broom. I would go back inside to Shaq Morris and let him get a touch. If they double him, he'll find somebody. But he's got to get the ball inside. In talking with Mick Cronin before the game, he gave us the opinion that is isn't like losing to teams twice in the same season. Happened last year with SMU, but you could tell there was a little something different in Mick's eye this morning. When you have two really good teams, Andrew, and one won the first game, I think an advantage goes to the guy who lost in the second game. He's going to make adjustments. When you win, you tend to say, oh, we won, and you don't change things. You lose, you change things. Morris to Willis, and he's fouled. Get Morris touches. Good things happen. He is a tremendous passer, so you don't, you shouldn't be afraid to throw him the ball in the low post. He's got great hands. He'll catch anything that comes near him, and he'll do the right thing with it. He's a very experienced player. Look at the first meeting two weeks ago in Cincinnati. Bearcats had won 39 games in a row at home. Wichita State ended that streak, and Cincinnati allowed the Shockers to shoot 52% from the floor. And let's say this, though it ended up a four-point game, Wichita State was in control the whole second half. They never lost the lead, so they really did a great job in that game. You shoot 53% against this team, you're doing something. Wichita State has its first point in the last four minutes and three seconds. Again, the winner today will be the number one seed in the American Conference Tournament later this week. Washington up with it. Third time this half. Cincinnati's had a shot halfway down and out. But Trayvon Scott cleans it up. And one of the reasons why they're such a good offensive rebounding team is because they big, keep their big guys down close to the basket in all their sets. And a foul called on Cincinnati. It's on Washington. That's his first. And the fifth team foul against McCronin and the Bearcats. Cincinnati ranked 10th in the country. They were as high as five earlier this year. That was the highest a Cronin team has ever been at Cincinnati. Now in his 12th season. Samick, double dribble, and a turnover by the Shockers. That's their fourth.
cleanse the crowd. Kane Broom explodes and gets it to drop. The transfer from Sacred Heart has been playing very well of late. Averaging 14 points per game over his last four. And he was a big spark in that first game against Wichita State with 16 off the bench. Kelly blocked by Washington. Well, you took a, you take a look here why Kane Broom was able to score. He goes over the pick and roll. Shaq Moore's here. He's got to start coming over a little sooner to help and then rotate in front of here. Instead, he comes a little late. Broom's able to finish. Shockers do not have a field goal in the last five minutes and 15 seconds, and that streak continues as Shaman is not able to connect. An eight-point Cincinnati lead. How about Keith Williams? He was three for 24 shooting threes this season, and he buries it. Part of a 16-1 run. Boy, this team, team came out with intense focus. I'm telling you, you have a little bit more of an edge when you got beat the first time in a row. First time at home, especially. Frank Ham and Wichita State still cannot get a field goal to drop. Keep in mind, Greg Marshall does not call timeouts. In 29 games this year, he has called a total of 29 timeouts. I've never heard of such a thing. Last year in 36 games, he called 37. That's incredible. He's told us that he wants his team to fight through adversity on their own and says it makes him tougher in the long run. Well, 16 to one run right now and no timeout. Washington's three no good. And the ball comes right back to Washington. And before the shot, we have a foul on the floor against Wichita State. And that'll take us to a media timeout with 7.43 to go. Does not have a field goal in the last six minutes and 26 seconds. And let's listen in on Greg Marshall's huddle. Box him out, get him out of there. You can't take forever to make your layups. You gotta stick it in or dunk it, like Brown did, like Rashard did. Well, one thing he has seen recently is they are really coming hard to the offensive glass, so he's right. He needs his guys to box out, and if you're going to finish at the rim with Cincinnati, as tough as they are defensively, you've got to finish hard. Two great points by Greg Marshall. Wichita State has missed four layups in this game. Speaking to Marshall's point, it's Bearcat basketball with 7.40 to go. And Mick Cronin calls a lot of plays. They are a set play team. Wichita State, a motion offense team. Broom is bumped. A foul on Wichita State. That's their sixth of the first half. Second foul on Frank Camp. And Austin Reeves hops off the bench for Greg Marshall. Frank Camp will exit. You know, Kane Broom offers them something different than Justin Jennifer. Justin Jennifer, not a great scorer, but he only has two turnovers in his last 115 minutes. Kane Broom can really put up numbers. Nick Cronin going out of play from the Cincinnati bench. I don't think it would be a bad thing for Wichita State to try a little bit of zone. Broom, runner, won't go, and Shamit takes it off the glass. Shamit for three. Final! You know, I think Cincinnati's in a pretty good groove offensively. Sometimes when you change up defenses, like I said, to play a zone, you can throw them off their rhythm a little bit. First field goal in seven minutes and six seconds for Wichita State. Here's Gary Clark. Evans with three on the shot clock. Step back three. And Kelly the rebound. We're showing Kelly fourth of the American with better than seven rebounds per game. But Greg Marshall knows his team. That was some great man-to-man -man defense on that possession. Kelly attacking. Missed it. Another miss in close to fifth missed layup by Wichita State. But you know, Andrew, we got to keep one thing in mind. 
about Cincinnati, one of the best shot blocking teams in the country. So even though they don't have a lot of blocks, those guys are so tough defending the rim. McCronin is going to get Nasir Brooks back into the game for Washington. Washington 0 for 5 shooting in the first half. When you look at Cincinnati, they have four blocks already and a number of intimidations. Morris guarded by Brooks. They pushed him way out that time. That's not where he wants it. He's got to get in deeper. Brown for three. In his last three games, Zach Brown had scored a total of two points. He's got three on that last shot. Six straight for the Shockers to pull with him five, and now five on the shot clock. Boom with three. Boom, deep three. Morris had it taken away. Cumberland up and in. That was close to a shot clock violation. That was really good defense again. That's two great possessions in a row. Wichita State starting to get after him now on their end also. Here's Kelly for three. Soccer goal. An own goal. A header. <laughs> Welcome to March. Where anything goes, especially this year. Cumberland off the side of the backboard and Last touch by Brooks. Let's go back and take a look at that, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, funky baskets? I don't know, I think like, it's like a soccer play. Boom! Right off Ricochet. Cumberland's <laughs> jugular and into the basket. <laughs> I've seen everything, but that's, uh, I'm going to add that to the uh, repertoire. Oh, Taurus, that's, uh, that's what they do. That's what they do. That's where you got to get him to rock. 106 on the decibel meter. Fourteen points in the paint for Wichita State. They've made four of their last six. Washington, finally. He was 0 for 5 until that triple. That ends a 10-2 run with 3.20 to go in the first half. Cincinnati's already clinched a share of the league title. To win it outright, they've got to win today. Otherwise, they will share it with Wichita State. Austin Reeves has not been involved in this game. He thought he was going to be getting his man off his feet there to draw a foul. Cincinnati, very smart, staying away from him. Reeves is scoreless in the first half. Clark won't go, and Morris the rebound. Shamit, quick three, took it. The one guy you got to find in transition, Landry Shamit. Number 11, Shamit has 11 points here in the first half. Washington another three, not this time. Shaman, he's feeling it. Hands off to Morris, and a travel by Shaq Morris. Takes us to a timeout with 2.09 to go in the first half, but here come the Shockers, coach.
These Shockers, when they get up and down, they get this game a little bit faster. You've got a fine Landry Shamit, one of the best three-point shooters in the country. Here they have Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, Seth Davis are joined by NCAA Selection Committee Chair Bruce Rasmussen to discuss the ins and outs of bracketing the field of 68. That's coming up on AT&T at the half. As you take a look, the American Conference figures to have a solid three teams in the field, Cincinnati, Wichita State, and Houston. Yeah, those three teams are definitely lost. And you know what? If SMU doesn't have the injuries they had, Central Florida had some bad injuries, those teams would have been in the hunt for NCAA Big Bowl. Give Kelvin Sampson a tremendous amount of credit for what he's done in Houston. Rob Gray, if you haven't seen him, really good player. Three teams in the RPI top 20. Same as the SEC, same as the Big Ten. We'll see the Big Ten Championship later today on CBS between Michigan and Purdue. Meanwhile, I feel like we're in a nightclub here and it's barely noon. This place is rocking. I'll tell you one thing, Andrew. Wichita State's gotten themselves back in this game with their defense. Tough play by Evans. And as soon as I say it, the guy takes his man to the basket and gets a layup. 11 points for Jacob Evans. I think that left ankle is doing okay. Willis out to Shamit. Another three. Not this time. Shamit, three of six, shooting threes. The rest of the Shockers have combined to go one for seven. And the other thing, Andrew, about Wichita State that's uncharacteristic, only one point from their bench tonight. They normally have one of the best benches in America. McDuffie just picked up his second foul. It's a one and one for Cincinnati. <laughs> Zach Brown comes back in with 1.35 to go. And McDuffie goes out with the two fouls. Washington's at the line for a one and one. Transfer from NC State. <laughs> Missed it. Cincinnati just four of nine from the line here in the first half. With 90 seconds to go. Shamit out to Willis. He'll take that three and make it. Just his 15th three of the year. Well, Cincinnati converged on that drive so hard, they left people open. One minute to go. Evans looking for three more. Give it to him. He's got 14. When he gets his feet right, he steps to the ball like he did there. He's money in the bank. That was great being, that was being ready to shoot the ball. 23 second difference between the game clock and the shot clock here in the first half. Willis loves to shoot and he is fouled. Second foul on Gary Clark. That looks like Clark knew he was a lefty and thought he was, he went right with his left hand that time. Gary Clark trying to take away the left going to the lane and let him go baseline instead. Tomorrow on CBS, it's a great night of comedy with Kevin Can Wait, Man with a Plan, Superior Donuts, and the new comedy, Living Biblically. All new tomorrow, 8, 7 Central only, CBS. This building opened in 1955, and the scoring record was set 60 years ago this week by Oscar Robertson of Cincinnati. He scored 50 points in this building on March 1st, 1958, and that record still stands today. The big O. Cincinnati calls a timeout with 36 seconds to go. At the Lexus Command Performance Sales Event, experience our most exhilarating models, including the track-tuned IS, GS, RC, and LC. But get here before they're gone, because while exhilaration can be simulated, nothing compares to the real thing.
Experience the Command Performance Sales Event for yourself now through April 2nd. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. Coming up on Saturday, the day tips off with Inside College Basketball, presented by Progressive Insurance, then the American Conference Semis, followed by the Mountain West Championship at 6 Eastern on CBS. Of course, coming up later today, we mentioned it, the Big Ten Tournament Championship game, 4.30 Eastern time, Michigan-Purdue. That should be a good one, Coach. Purdue's been great all year, but how about the job John Beeline's team is doing right now? His teams, it seems like every year at the end of the year, get better and better and better. That would be a heck of a game. And now we see Wichita State in full court pressure for the first time. Cincinnati only has two turnovers today, none in the last 13 minutes. Difference of six seconds between the game clock and the shot clock. Yeah, they're going to take this down as far as they can. And go to the glass really hard. Evans fakes the three. Now puts it up, no good. Rebound to Washington, his shot won't go. Willis grabs it with five seconds to go. Washington should have pulled that one out. Reeves to Willis. He's got to put it up, he does. And Again, they loaded up on the drive, and they left Willis alone. He gave the shot fake. They should have stayed on the ground. Kyle Washington should have pulled that offensive rebound out, and Cincinnati would have gotten the last shot of the half, and that would not have happened. Wichita State survives a seven-minute drought without a field goal to only trail by one at the half. What a game. That's the end of the first with Cincinnati leading 37-36. Now let's go to Greg Gumbel in New York. AT&T. And by State Farm, here to help life go right. Welcome back to Wichita. It's a Cincinnati one-point lead at the half. As we take a look at the Coca-Cola first half stats, Cincinnati only had two turnovers. Meanwhile, Wichita State with five. That led to 12 points for the Bearcats. Back courtside with Steve Lapis. I'm Andrew Catalan. This atmosphere is everything we thought it would be, but credit to Cincinnati. They're up for the challenge, led by Jacob Evans III. Well, he's one of your more experienced guys. He's got 14 points in this game. Two threes, he has really taken charge for the Bearcats, and he's the reason why they are ahead. They're not really getting anything consistently from anybody else on the team. This kid can shoot threes, he can take it to the basket, and really, it's been Jaron Cumberland and him doing all the damage, not getting much inside the paint. Evans with 14 points as you take a look at his shot chart from the first half. And again, he was a bit of a question mark with the way he came out of that two-lane game on Thursday. Turned his left ankle, did not return after going down in the first half. But Mick Cronin said he seems fine, and he sure does look fine here against Wichita State. I think it would take a whole lot to miss this today. <laughs> Cincinnati 23-1 when leading at the half this year, while Wichita State 3-3 three three while trailing at the half. And a foul. It was called on the Bearcats. Well, you can see what Greg Marshall told his guys at halftime. Get the ball into Shaq Morris. They were at their best when they were getting inside out, not just trying to go outside in. Cincinnati's a team you got to move around. you got to get that ball to different places on the floor, or they will lock you down. The foul was on Cumberland. Wichita State basketball. In that first half, the Shockers had 13 field goals. Shamit scored or assisted on eight of the 13. He's got the ball here with 10 on the shot clock. Shamit is fouled on the shot. So two quick fouls this half against Cincinnati. And interestingly enough, Kane Broom starts the second half instead of Jennifer. And he fouls on the jump shot there. Just get a hand straight up in the air. Not necessary to stick your hand in, stick it up. 
First foul on Kane Broom. Shamit misses the free throw. CBS Sports Network brings you nonstop conference tournament play and Colonial and Patriot League championship action starting Tuesday at 7 Eastern. See who will get a ticket to the big dance on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Shamit one out of two to tie the game. And you have to think that if Wichita State's going to win this game, they've got to start turning Cincinnati over a little bit. Two turnovers, not one point off turnovers. In the first game, they have 22 points off turnovers, Wichita State. Zero today. Shockers have erased an 11-point deficit in the first half to tie the game. Evans wide open. Cannot hit, and Reeves takes it down. Wichita State was very lucky there. Shockers have not led since it was 15 to 14 early in the first half. And the chance to take the lead here just over a minute into the second half. Yeah. Kelly, Brown wasn't ready for the pass and a turnover by Wichita State. Evans again left open for three, and he cannot make the Shockers pay. And that was a tremendous pass by Gary Clark from the low post to the opposite side of the floor, which is where the open guy is. Hit it on the numbers. Got to knock that one out. Morris, he's been shooting more threes. This one won't go, and Evans the rebound. Steal by Kelly instead. Clark holding on tight. Hands off for Evans. Neither team has scored a field goal this half as Evans has missed three straight threes. All three have been pretty good looks. Very good looks. That's why they got to be careful with Stuff State. Playing with fire with him. Reeves catch and shoot three. Right now, a lot of energy being expended, but not much going on. Well, this is a bad sign. Evans, we told you about the left ankle, hobbles to the Cincinnati bench. So the Cincinnati training staff will take a closer look at the junior out of Baton Rouge, who's pointing to his right leg. It was the left ankle that he injured on Thursday night. So Evans comes out, Keith Williams into the game. Broom, 10 on the shot clock. In traffic, Broom with a tough two. First field goal of the half for either team. Broom redshirted last year after spending two years at Sacred Heart. He was the Northeast Conference Player of the Year, averaging 23 points per game as a sophomore. Reeves, another three. And Austin Reeves can't get it going today. You know, it's amazing, Andrew. You play against a great defensive team. Even when you're open, you think they're around somewhere, and you just aren't comfortable. That's how Austin Reeves looks to me. He was wide open on that, but he was not comfortable because he thinks they are around somewhere. He's second in the conference in three-point shooting percentage at 48%. However, today he's 0 for 4. But that's what great defensive teams do to you. You just always feel like you're under duress, even when you're not. Broom with the shot clock expiring. Back-to-back -back buckets for Kane Broom. Wichita State has had trouble finding consistent offense. Morris calling for it. He gets it in the paint, and he gets the bounce. I mean, i got to be honest with you. Against Cincinnati, I reverse the ball. I throw it to him every single time because they don't have a match for him. He had a good game the first time around. He can do everything, pass and score. Morris in double figures with 11 points. It's a two-point Cincinnati advantage. This is the guy they got to get going. Gary Clark, in both games, has not played great. Clark left open. First three, and he still can't get it going. 
Clark just one of four shooting today. Shamit baseline, reverse slam is good. Very smart by Landry Shamit. Cincinnati switches all those screens. He had Gary Clark on him with the side open. He said, I'm taking him, and he did. That's where switching can hurt you, especially in transition. Fans are not sitting down here at Wichita. They are still standing here five minutes into the half as Washington connects. And now some of them will sit down. Connor Frankham said, I think this will be the craziest atmosphere Coke Arena has ever seen. I don't know if he's wrong about that. It's been pretty wild today. Told you the students started lining up Friday afternoon as Brown lays it in. A great screen on the baseline and a terrific cut. Washington in traffic, forces up a shot. Taken off the glass by Washington, gets it back and puts it in. Great effort by Kyle Washington. You know, he could have stood there and pouted because he took such a bad shot. Instead, he went in there and was relentless and got it. And a whistle away from the ball. Brings us to a media timeout with 13.48 to go. Back and forth we go with the number one seed in the American Conference Tournament on the line. All right, Steve, let's take a look at the at t Fast Analysis. Well, take a look here, Zach Brown hanging out in the corner and watch this tremendous execution of his baseline screen. Right here, you're gonna see the ball go to Shaq Morris and watch, as soon as he gets it, he's gonna be looking because he's gonna see that screen come from Shamit and all of a sudden, Zach Brown wide open underneath. That's what you call a small to big screen. Great execution, and as we said earlier, Andrew, Shaq Morris can deliver the ball for a big guy. It was a slow start to this second half for both teams. Cincinnati started 0 for 3, Wichita State 0 for 4, but since then, the Bearcats have made four of their last six shots, and the Shockers have made three of their last three. 13.45 to go. The Shaman feeds Shaq Morris. Look at all the black jerseys around him when he misses. Uh, there's the adjustment from Mick Cronin. I don't think he wanted a triple team in there, <laughs> but double team certainly something aggressive like that. So he does. You got to take his vision away because, as we talked about, good pass. Defense, 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 defense. Cumberland calls for a screen. Cumberland inside, and it's taken away. Meanwhile, Jacob Evans still on the bench for Cincinnati. Has not returned since hobbling off, grabbing his right leg. Great Will a screen pass to Morris. You know what? It's funny. You commented about the pass, which it was, and I comment commented about the cut. It was both a great pass and a great cut. Fifth tie today. It's 45-0. Clark down low, had a block, but a foul is called. Couldn't even hear the whistle because it's so loud in here. And you know, Landry Shamit came over on that and gave great help and stopped the initial lob into Gary Clark. But in the end, they ended up fouling. Foul was on Willis, that's his second. Wednesday on CBS, if you haven't seen SEAL Team, it's time to experience a whole new mission. Wednesday, 9-8 Central on CBS. Cincinnati does not have a turnover in the last 20 minutes of game action. And let me tell you something, Andrew. They're playing against a team that has played pretty good defense. There's two turnovers for the game for the Bearcats. And six Wichita State turnovers have led to 12 points for Cincinnati. Frank Kent tried to force one into Morris, a tie up in the possession arrow, that favors Cincinnati. And now a good side for the Bearcats as Evans hops off the bench. He'll come back in. 
I'll tell you, Nasir Brooks really moves his feet well. He did a great job there of getting around Shaq Morris so that they couldn't get that ball inside. That was pretty good post defense. Evan sat for just under five minutes. Let's see if he shows any signs of limitation. Back in the game with 12 15 to play. Washington guarded by Morris. Washington wants to take it. And he's fouled. He will shoot two. It was on McDuffie coming over to help. And for Marcus McDuffie, that's his third. But they know Kyle Washington is a guy who's going to go left all the time. They got to take that left hand away. Washington had six points in the first meeting between these two a couple of weeks ago. He's got seven today. But he's just three of 11 from the floor. Greg Marshall's team over the last five seasons has lost just twice at Coke Arena. They are 72 and two in this building over the last five seasons. The only losses, Northern Iowa in 2016 and SMU this season. It's a lot of happy parties at home after the game, <laughs> I can tell you that. I didn't have quite as many. Had some, but not that many. That's a lot, that's a lot. Four point Cincinnati lead. McDuffie stays on the floor with three fouls. Yeah, they're getting nothing off the bench tonight, Andrew. That's a big thing, because normally their bench is one of the best in the nation. Frank Cannon. Won't go and Clark the rebound. Wichita State's bench averages 33 points per game. But tonight, only eight. Cumberland turnaround, short. McDuffie the rebound. McDuffie for three. The teams have combined to miss their first eight three-point shot attempts in this half, but McDuffie with three, and it's loud again at the roundhouse. Steals it from Broome. Numbers for the Shockers. McDuffie lays it in. I won. Tonight is Oscar night, so it's a good time for us to do the second edition of the Lappies. <laughs> I haven't recovered from seeing your trophy from last year. How about the player of the year, Coach? Well, I got Jalen Brunson. This guy, as Chris Mack said, under his face got to be wired because he is so efficient like a machine. He's been tremendous. Coach of the year, Tony Bennett. How are you 28-2? and two? And I'm telling you, his players are good. They're not that good. What a coach. And team of the year, got to be Virginia. How can they be winning the ACC outright easily by a couple of games? What a season for the University of Virginia this year. The best defensive team in the country with Cincinnati right behind them. But these are my last, and I won't be there tonight on the red carpet. And, to, and I won't be there to present them, but those are our last of the year. Jalen Brunson was very emotional as we saw in that picture upon receiving the lappy. Meanwhile, Cincinnati just committed its first turnover in 22 minutes, it led to a Wichita State bucket. They lead it by one. And it was a rip from a guy you wouldn't expect it to be from Connor Frank. Great defense on Kane Boone. This half, Cincinnati, four of seven from two-point range, 0 of four from deep. It was a Bearcats timeout. Let's see what they do out of the timeout. We're telling the shot clock. They go to Evans. Evans, short, but Clark has it, and a fresh shot clock for Cincinnati. Washington, no, tipped around the Shemmett. They took the left hand away and he couldn't score. Willis turns it over. Ball is still loose though. Cumberland on the ground and a tie up with the arrow going to the Shockers. 
10-15 to go in the second half. It's a one-point game. It's sponsored by Jersey Mike Subs. Be a sub above. Enterprise Rent-A-Car, official partner of the NCAA. And by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, reach for Reese's. Here's a look at the standings in the American Conference, final day of the regular season. The winner of our game gets the number one seed for the conference tournament. The semis and championship are next weekend here on CBS. And the American Conference Commissioner, Mike Oresco, is in attendance today. He told our CBS crew earlier this week the addition of Wichita State has been great for the league. Crowds have been excellent. Again, in their first year in the conference, here they are playing for a share of the conference title. And let's face it, it's a step off being in this league, and it's going to help them tremendously. If you remember last year, Wichita State, a 10 seed in the tournament. This year, they're going to be a four or less. So being in this league has really helped Wichita State. Yeah, Greg Marshall told us this morning that we didn't go up one weight class from the Missouri Valley of the American. We went up two weight classes, and that should help their seeding for sure from next Sunday. Cincinnati has gone close to four minutes without a field goal. Five on the shot clock for Wichita State. Willis blocked by Evans. Great defensive play by Jacob Evans the third. And Evans ends up on Willis, who's an inside player, and Evans a perimeter player, but boy, was he tough in defending that post move. Fifth block for Cincinnati. Cincinnati, they're eighth in the country, averaging just over five blocks per game. And you see why they can switch everything. They got perimeter guys that are pretty big that can guard inside people. Washington corner three. And the long rebound to Shemek. Washington three of 13 shooting. And no assists. Willis spins and had it taken away, as did Kelly. More great defense by the Bearcats. Evan scoreless this half until that. His first field goal after going 0 for 4 to begin the half. Cincinnati regains the lead with nine minutes to play. Shamit doesn't get it to go but a whistle. And a foul is called. Look for something late in the game. They switched on Landry Shamit again. And every time he's got Kyle Washington on him, he is taking him to the basket. At the end of this game, if it's close and they need to create a mismatch, look for Landry Shamit to pick and roll with Kyle Washington and get him on him and take him to the basket. Let's see how this develops. Second foul on Washington. Tuesday on CBS, it's the game-changing season that keeps getting better with every episode. Michael Weatherly stars in a new bowl Tuesday after NCIS only CBS. Switching defensively can be really good, but it can cost you sometimes too with some mismatches. Sixteen points for Landry Shamit to go along with five rebounds and five assists. Fifth lead change today. It's now the Shockers by one. Clark on the wing. Dribbles inside, back by Kelly. Clark gets it back. Shot clock does not reset. Only three to shoot. Evans has to force one off, and he doesn't. Didn't get it off in time. Shot clock violation. Just the third turnover by Cincinnati. Make it four. That was a big time defensive play by Rashard Kelly. They have given Gary Clark fits in both the games they've played with their defense inside on him. Clark is one for five this half. Frankamp has not scored today. And he still hasn't scored. And off the front of the rim, Connor Frankamp averages better than 10 points per game. And Evans is limping again. The official, Doug Sermons, just asked Evans if he wants him to stop the game. Evans sh has shaken him off, but he's clearly winching. Tough kick. Oh, what a move. Oh, oh, and gets there! 
Oh. Wow, Jared Cumberland for two. That was as good a stop and go as you're going to see anywhere. That's what you call shaking somebody. Cumberland's first point to the half. Cincinnati by one. Frank Camp on the baseline, trying to get on the scoreboard, and he does. His first field goal for the senior on senior day. Nice move, but horrendous defense on the baseline by Cincinnati. Evans still not right, grabbing his right leg in front of the Cincinnati bench. He's not even running. Cumberland again to the hoop, not this time, and Morris takes it away. Evans trying to backpedal, Shamit goes right past him. They switched again, let's see what happens. Shamit for three. I don't know, they gotta do something with Evans. I mean, he yes. can barely walk the ball up the floor. Yeah, I'm surprised that uh, we're in a break zone for a media timeout. And I don't even know if the Bearcats can win. The referee, all he's gotta do is tell the referee when they have the ball and he'll stop the game. Evans playing on one leg right now with eight seconds to go on the shot clock. Evans for three. All he needs <laughs> is one leg. You know, kids are funny. Yeah, you know, my leg is hurt, but when I got the ball in my hand, it's not hurting anymore. <laughs> Big three for Evans. Morris among three Bearcats, and a foul is called, and now we'll get a break, and we'll see what Mick Cronin does. Does he keep Evans in, or does he take him out? Evans for three, it's a two-point game. And it's so loud in this building, Greg Marshall can barely communicate with his team in the huddle. I'm telling you right now, he didn't hear a word Darrell Willis <laughs> said. He was just like, yeah, 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 yeah okay, yeah, you're right, good. All right, man, he didn't hear a word he said. Our CBS crew today doing a great job. Producer Jonathan Siegel, director Andy Goldberg. What a scene this has been at the Roundhouse in Wichita. First time CBS has ever done a Wichita State game here at the Roundhouse. And this crowd in this game has not disappointed. How about how hard these kids are playing, Andrew? There's only been seven fouls the second half. Five on Cincinnati, two on Wichita State, playing this hard, and the referees are doing a heck of a job. This is not an easy game for a fifth year. Meanwhile, Jacob Evans is on the bench. The training staff continues to work on the Cincinnati Juniors, not out there right now, with 6-10 to go. They came with the 1-2-1-1-3 one, 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 quarter court press. Oh. And McDuffie's really good in that because he's so long and athletic. Nearly a steal by McDuffie. Instead, it's Broom setting up the Bearcats offense. Jennifer has come out to replace Evans. Two small guards in the game now for what? Cincinnati. Washington, wild shot is good around Jack Morris. That's pretty good defense. That's a tough shot. I mean, Bearcats if, by two. If you're Greg Marshall, you look like I take ten of those, you'll make one. Oh, Rashad Kelly! An explosion in Wichita! minutes to go. Boom, directing traffic. Takes a screen from Washington. Boom, back to Washington for three. Doesn't get their bounce. Kelly the rebound and he's fouled. Well, let's take a look at this cut. That is a great cut by Rashad Kelly. He didn't stand. As soon as he passed it, he went hard to the back. And then he went hard to the basket again. He went hard on the cut, and he went hard on the dunk. One of six seniors. He's their glue guy. He's emerged as their team leader. Obviously more of a rebounder than a scorer. 
But this Wichita State team would not be the same without Rashard Kelly. Fourth leading rebounder in the league and their best interior defensive player? Absolutely. That was the sixth team foul on the Bearcats. So Wichita State will shoot the rest of the half. Shockers have only committed two fouls this half. Kelly. But a McDuffie who drives in, comes up short on the shot, and Evans, who's back in the game, gets the rebound. Evans jogging up into the front court with Jaron Cumberland running the show right now for Cincinnati. And Cincinnati really has nowhere to go inside. That's their biggest problem in the half court. Kyle Washington, too many jumpers, and Gary Clark has not been able to get off yet. Clark. Gets it to go. And that was a big one. They could have called the charge there. It was possible. Eight points for Clark. Inside four minutes to play. To be a good half court team, you got to have a presence in the paint that can score something. Fans on their feet here in Wichita. And it's been a great scene all day and a turnover. Turnover number eight for the Shockers. It takes us to a timeout. We are set up for a big finish on CBS. 3.31 to go. The one seed in the conference tournament is on the line here in the American. Madness at the State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Championship between Illinois State and Loyola Chicago. That's coming up as soon as we're done here from Wichita, of course. The Shockers just left the Missouri Valley to join the American this year. They won or shared the Missouri Valley Conference title in each of the last four years. And now in position with a win today to share the American Conference title. If they can beat Cincinnati right now, Greg Marshall's team trails by two. You see the game reset. Marshall with three timeouts remaining. Cincinnati has a pair. Greg Marshall only has two team fouls. I would tell my guys in this situation, listen, be aggressive going for steals at half court. If they call a foul, so what? Maybe they don't call it. Start using your hands a little bit more to go after the ball. And Clark is fouled on the shot with 3.28 to play. And I don't mean on the shot. I mean out here where it's not going to be a one and one yet or anything. Be more aggressive with your hands. Go for steals. First foul on Rashard Kelly. Third team foul on the Shockers. We take a look at the Cincinnati defense, Steve, and what they've done today. Wichita State averages 83 points per game. Ten times this year, they've scored at least 90. And with 3.28 to go, they've got 58 points. And, you know, part of that, too, is just like Virginia in a lot of ways, their offense complements their defense. They play at a tempo that's number 315 out of 351 teams in the country. So they play relatively slow on offense and make every possession life and death. And it's hard to play that way if you're not used to it. And they are making Wichita State play that way today. Clark's in double figures. He's got 10 points to go along with four rebounds. And the lead is four for Cincinnati. Nick Cronin has never won an outright league title at Cincinnati. He shared the title, but never all to himself. They're 3-11 away, and we have a whistle inside, and that's going to be a one-and-one. And, one. and you know what was important there? That Shaq Morris was working hard to get position. That's how why he got fouled. If he stands outside at the foul line top of the key area, who's going to foul him? If he posts up aggressively, he's going to get fouled like he did there. You take a look here at Shaq Morris. It's the third foul on Washington and a one and one for Morris, who's a 72% free throw shooter. Today, three out of four. And a big shot for Morris, the big fella in his senior year out of Edmond, Oklahoma, attended Memorial High School. He's one of five in school history with at least 1,000 points, 500 rebounds, and 100 blocks. One added two, and Glark, uh, Clark takes it away. The Cincinnati having a set play here. They like to isolate Gary Clark. 
Clark was open for a minute. Boone didn't see. Now Clark is guarded tightly. Boone back out to Clark. Fakes the three over to Cumberland, wide open. Missed it way off the mark, and Morris the rebound. You're not going to get a better shot than that. Austin Reeves is in the game. The second best three-point shooter in the American. Get Shaq on the box. Two and a half to play. Here's Reeves, deep three. Hasn't been a good day for the sophomore Reeves. I think at this point, you know you're in a grinded out game. You gotta at least get to the foul line on every possession. You gotta go inside out. Reeves is 0 for 5 shooting all five attempts from deep. Cincinnati using some clock, five to shoot. Evans lost it going up, gets it back and throws one up. It's a shot clock violation. Well, this is tremendous defense by Wichita State on this possession. So the ball goes back to Wichita State with 1.55 to go. I like the subs that just came in for Wichita State. They're better offensive players. Frank has been much better than Reeves today. Darrell Willis is in. He can score inside and a little bit outside. McDuffie, this is their best offensive team in the game right now for, for Wichita State. This half, neither team has led by more than four points. Right now it's three. Great recovery by Cincinnati that time. Shamit for the tie, too strong. Out of bounds to Wichita State. Tough shot. Yeah, that's the off Cincinnati. Cumberland touched it last. Wichita State this half, one of eight from beyond the arc. Winner today gets the number one seed for the American Conference Tournament coming up this week. Morris inside, and a travel. I think that was a good call. I think he did a little dance when he caught it. Now here comes the defensive team for Greg Marshall. Kelly and Brown back in. McDuffie and Willis back to the bench. They got, Andrew, they got three fouls to give. It's getting to the point where you really need to be aggressive on the ball. You're down three, and the other team has the ball. Wichita State, four minutes now without a field goal. I would reach. I would try to get steal, but, you know, then the shot clock reset. So it's got a negative to it, too. Chance of defense from this sold-out wild crowd in Wichita. 1-10 to go. Boom. Won't go, and Shamit skies for the rebound. Push it up. Final minute. And Greg Marshall, he doesn't call timeouts. Wait a minute. He called he one. Did. I'm glad we're sitting down. <laughs> That's just his 30th timeout this season in their 30th game. Unbelievable. Chicago, the one seed. And Illinois State here in Wichita with Steve Lapis. I'm Andrew Catalan. It's been a nail biter from the start. Right now, the Bearcats lead by three. It's Wichita State basketball with 54 seconds to go. Those three fouls right now for Wichita State looming pretty large. Their offensive team is back on the floor with Willis, McDuffie, and Fran Camp joining. Shamit and Morris, and Frank Camp hits. That's a two. The kid from Wichita. And a timeout called by Jacob Evans. 47 seconds to go. It's a one-point game. I'm leaving the track behind, but I'm not standing still. And with GoDaddy, I've made my ideas real. I made my own way. Now it's time to make yours. Everything is working just like it should. <laughs> Daddy, you're strong. Oh, you bet I am. The Egg White Grill, so you can bring on the day.
We the people are defined by the things we share and the ones we love. Who never stop wondering what we'll do or where we'll go next. We the people who are better together than we are alone are unstoppable. Welcome to the entirely new expedition. This place has been bonkers all day, and it still is a one-point game, 47 seconds to go. If you're in that Cincinnati huddle, and you're Mick Cronin, what do you tell in your team? Well, the big thing is you gotta get the ball in bounds first. You gotta come down, use the clock, but run offense. If you use the whole 30 seconds, fine, but you gotta run. Don't stand outside at half court and let the clock tick, and then use the last five seconds of the shot clock to do something. Run some offense. And Wichita State, only three team fouls. I, I think they should give their fouls now, but it's gotta be bang, bang, bang. It's gotta be within four or five seconds. Give them all. Broom up ahead, and now he'll pull it back, and Cincinnati will run some clock. Well, now you can't give him because you don't want to reset on that shot clock. 17 second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Here comes that pick and roll. Evans guarded by McDuffie. Great defense by McDuffie. Five to shoot. Evans, up okay, goes, and it put the in. Out of bounds to Wichita State. Shot clock turned off, 16 seconds to go. I thought McDuffie did a great job the first time around. That time he got lucky because he went for the shot fake the last time. And that ball it looks like it's off Cincinnati. They will review this. The officials are at the monitor. They can do that inside two minutes to confirm who last touched the basketball. And now Greg Marshall didn't have to call timeout, but he doesn't know whose ball it is. That's the problem. And guess what? If it's Cincinnati's ball, he's got a lot of fouling to do quickly. Wow, look at this shot we have for you. It was ruled on the court, Wichita State basketball, and that last touch by Washington, tough to tell from that angle if he was in or out. It looks to me, what's clear here is that it's not clear, and if it's not clear, you go with what's on the court. They call Wichita State basketball, there is no reason to overturn that, let's go play. I think if you gotta look at a play like this 15 times, you just stick with the call that happened on the court. And assuming they do, it would set up what we set up off the top of our broadcast. It is Wichita State basketball. This is what it's all about, the chess match. The number one offensive team in the conference down by one against the top-ranked defensive team in the conference. And now you got to look for one of two things. First of all, Wichita State knows that Cincinnati likes to switch. So maybe they try to create a mismatch and get Shannon get Kyle Washington or one of the big guys on Shannon. They could do that. I think what they should do, get the ball into number 24 in the low post and let him work and get to the free throw line. Kyle Washington's on the bench for Cincinnati. Any of the big guys, but look at this. Get Gary Clark on him, get Scott on him. Get one of those two guys on a switch on Shannon or get the ball into Shaq Morris in the box. That's what I like. Shannon will bring the ball up the floor. Shannon attacking, nowhere to go, blocked by Clark, out of bounds to Wichita State, 9.3 on the clock. Well, they went for A, which was create the switch and let Shamit go, and he had the big guy on him, but the big guy pretty, did a great job defensively. Fran Camp will inbound for Wichita State. Gets it to Morris, back to Fran Camp. Five seconds to go. Frank Camp, the Wichita native, on his senior day. He won't go. Willis, and it's out of bounds. That's it. Cincinnati has won. They are American Conference champions. What an unbelievable basketball game. 
as Cincinnati holds on in the final possession. Yeah, that was a bad possession, though. They got the ball in Connor Frankamp's hands. He's not a one-on-one -on -one player, doesn't get a good shot off, and then obviously at this point, it's hard for Willis to get that off, but that was not good execution there. Shamit didn't touch the ball, and Jack Morris didn't touch the ball. That's not a Greg Marshall team. Usually execution much better in that situation. This is the first time since 2002, when Cincinnati was in Conference USA, that they've won an outright league title. First time in the Mick Cronin era they've done it. They will be the number one seed for the American Conference Tournament coming up this week. Semifinals and championship next weekend on CBS. And well, you wouldn't be surprised if those two teams meet again. 62-61, Cincinnati wins. For Steve Lapis, this is Andrew Catalan saying so long from Wichita. Coming up, the State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Championship between Illinois State and Loyola Chicago on CBS.